Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using consistent deformation method. In this frame, there is a beam AB and a column BC. In the beam, there is no load. In the column BC, we have a point load 48 kN. It acts in the center. Length of AB is 4 meter and the height of BC is 6 meter. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be horizontal reaction, vertical reaction and movement. In the point C, there is a hinged support. In the hinged support, there will be horizontal reaction and a vertical reaction. So the number of unknown reactions and movements are 5. The available equilibrium equations are 3. The degree of static indeterminacy will be 5 minus 3. So it will be 2. From the point C, let us release the horizontal reaction HC and the vertical reaction VC. So the point C becomes a free end. This frame is called the released structure. Let us draw the coordinates diagram. Let us keep HC as the first coordinate and VC as the second coordinate. Let us assume that HC is acting towards the right side and VC is acting upwards. Finally, if we get any negative value, that means our assumption is incorrect. We have to change the direction. We know the equations which are used in the consistent deformation method. HC is the first coordinate. So P1 will be HC. VC is our second coordinate. So P2 will be VC. In the point C, there is no sinking or yielding of the supports. So delta 1 and delta 2 will be 0. Finally, we will get these equations. Now let us take the released structure. To find these displacements, we are going to use unit load method. We have to find the moments M, M1 and M2. First, we are going to find the moment M. Using the loads in the released structure, we have to find M. We have to make sections. Let us keep this point as D. In this frame, there are three different parts. A, B, B, D and D, C. So we have to make three sections. One in A, B, one in B, D and one in D, C. You can see that I have made three sections. One in A, B, one in D, B and one in D, C. These two sections I have made at a distance of X from C. And this section I have made at a distance of X from the point B. Now let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter the members. We know that there are three members. C, D, D, B and B, A. Let us enter them. For the sections in C, D and D, B, the origin is C. And for the section in A, B, the origin is B. For C, D, the limit is 0 to 3. For D, B, the limit is 3 to 6. And for B, A, the limit is 0 to 4. Now we are going to find the moment M. We need to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Let us find M in CD. Up to the section there is no load. So the moment will be 0. Let us find M in DB. Up to the section we have a horizontal load 48 kN. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 3. Let us find the moment M in BA. 
up to the section we have only the horizontal load 48 kilo newton it is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 3 48 into 3 we will get 144 now we are going to find the moment m1 we need to remove all of the loads from the frame and we have to apply unit load in the direction of hc because it is our first coordinate you can see that i have applied unit load in the direction of hc let us find m1 in cd up to this section we have only the unit load it is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x it will be x let us find m1 in dp up to this section we have only the unit load it is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x it will be x let us find m1 in ba up to this section we have only the unit load it is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6 1 into 6 it will be 6 now we are going to find the moment m2 for that in the direction of vc we have to apply unit load you can see that in the direction of vc i have applied unit load let us find m2 in cd and in dp up to these two sections we have only the unit load but for this load there is no perpendicular distance in this case the moment will be zero let us find m2 in ba up to this section we have only the unit load it is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x it will be x using this formula we can find delta 1l for cd the moment m is zero so no need to do the integration we can directly apply zero for db the limit is 3 to 6 and for ba the limit is 0 to 4 then we can apply m and m1 using a calculator we can do these integrations for delta 1l we will get this then using this formula we can find delta 2l using this formula we can find delta 11 using this formula we can find delta 12 and delta 21 and finally using this formula we can find delta 22 in these two equations we have found everything let us apply them no need to apply ei because it will be eliminated we will have these two equations we can take your calculator and solve these two equations so that we will get hc and vc for both of them we have got the positive values that means our assumptions are correct we know that in this frame there is no vertical load in this case the values of vc and va will be same but they will be acting in the opposite directions vc is acting upwards so va should be acting downwards then using this rule we can find ha to find ma let us take a moment about a from c vc is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 4 hc is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it is also positive and the distance is 6 this load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 3 let us assume that ma is a hogging moment so it will be acting in the anti clockwise direction so it is positive for ma we will get minus 18 that means our assumed direction is incorrect ma is not a hogging moment it is a sagging moment we have to change the direction you can see that i have changed the direction into clockwise 
using the right hand side rule we can find the shear force values for the beam AB for the beam AB there are only two perpendicular forces this one and this one using them we can find the shear force values now let us take the column BC here there are three perpendicular forces 30 48 and 18 using them we can find the shear force values suppose it is difficult you can assume that BC is horizontal in the point B we have 30 in the point D we have 48 and in the point C we have 18 now using the right hand side rule we can find these values here you can see the shear force diagram using the right hand side rule we can find the moments in the point A and the point B let us find the moment at A in the point A we have MA which is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive let us find the moment at B MA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive BA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4 finally we will get minus 36 we know that the point C is a simply supported end so the moment will be 0 to find the moment at D we can use left hand side rule for VC there is no perpendicular distance so we should not consider this HC is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3 for the moment at D we will get 54 here you can see the bending moment diagram if you plot this diagram in the opposite sides that is called the bending moment diagram on the tension side alternatively we can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method first we need to draw the free moment diagram then we have to draw the end moment diagram when we combine both of them we will get the bending moment diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video